Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I'm going to need a little guidance here because I'm not really sure if I'm speaking on the bill or out of personal privilege. So feel free to jump in and let me know if I'm still in bounds. 4,056 days ago, I was diagnosed with massive renal cell carcinoma requiring a five and a half hour surgery at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center at Shadyside. I was informed that if I stuck to my status quo and tried to quote unquote, tough it out, I would die. I was literally given the 10 day warning. The cancer within me was so big that they were afraid one of two things would happen. Either it would explode and shower cancer all through my guts, which would have been a death sentence, or it would continue its growth and hook up the vena cava and race to my heart again, cutting my time very, very short. After consultation with a large, large number of people, we made the decision to go ahead and have the process done. Now, earlier today, we heard from my friend from Penn Hills what it is to be with cancer. We've heard quite a bit today about little kids with epilepsy in an effort to churn our hearts. Well, I'm here to give you a different perspective. I live with cancer every day. I'm told <clears throat> there's a, a very high likelihood I'll have it again. Now, I've got two daughters. They tell me what I have is hereditary, that I probably got it from my father. Two daughters. Mr. Speaker, let me tell you some things about cancer. When you're laying there, you pray more than you've ever prayed before. But the thoughts that go through your head what happens next? Who's going to take care of my kids? I was lucky a friend of mine afflicted with the same thing, Joe Cook, came to visit me. And he gave me the hints. He said, Jeff, they're not going to let you leave and go home until you can do three things. Until you can eat, until you can walk, and until you can show the other end of eating. Feel free to chastise me on that one, Speaker. The walking wasn't a problem. <laughs> it was the eating. You just don't want to eat when there's 47 staples stuck in your guts. So Joe Cook came to me, and Joe Cook offered me that oil. And I didn't take it, because I said, no, no. I'm a state rep. I got to live what I preach. Two daughters, speaker. And with, um, with the odds, somewhat like that they'll deal with this too. I want them to have access to comfort that I did not have. Mr. Speaker, when you're laying there looking at trays of food and you can't touch them, but you know that eating that stuff is your ticket home, it was tough. Now, Mr. Speaker, we have a chance today to improve the lives of those kids and old people like me. I think that it needs to be made clear that within this bill is not open green leaf sales. And we can speculate where this goes all we want. I don't know. We can speculate on aliens landing out on the lawn and have about as much accuracy. But what I do know, Mr. Speaker, is that marijuana oils like Charlotte's Web that the gentleman identified earlier 
There's no way to scientifically prove them, but we know they work. <coughs> Please let my kids have access to this. And that's the end of my personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Please vote in favor of SB3.